Let's take a look at the uh, design of experiments. Some definitions, experimental units, the individuals that are studied. These can be people, animals, plants, or things. When the experimental units are people, they are sometimes called subjects. Outcome or response, what is measured on each, on each experimental unit. Treatments, uh, pr the procedures applied to each experimental unit, there are always two or more treatments. If you're doing an experiment, um, it's nice to have some kind of comparison. Um, so if you apply this treatment um, to these these particular units, uh, experimental units, and then um, you apply this treatment, then you can, you can compare the results. If you only apply one uh, treatment, um, what are you going to compare? There's nothing to compare. Now a randomized experiment, study in which an investigator assigns a treatment to the assigns a treatment to the experimental units at random. Um, it's important that uh, a lot of different things in experiments and studies be randomized because if I specifically choose a cer certain people to receive uh, a treatment, well, maybe I'm targeting them for a reason, like they're the healthier ones, and so it might skew the results of my, my um, experiment. Now, observational study. This is one in which the assignment to treatment groups is not made by the investigator. Oftentimes, the observational study is you're, you're observing uh, what's happening. So you're not actually giving them treatment, but maybe you're, you're observing, um, oh, um, I'm trying to think of something, something more than um, the retrospective where you're looking at the past. Um, maybe you're going out and just observing uh, people at a mall. Um, you're not applying treatment to them, but you're just um, analyzing how they're, how they're behaving. Now, placebo. This is a harmless tablet that looks like the drug, but it has no medical effect. So if you're applying a treatment, maybe you give some people the actual treatment, and you randomly pick them, and um, then you give some people the placebo, and you see what happens. And uh, some people receiving a placebo may, may get better results, and you're sitting there, that's kind of strange. Power of the mind. Um, and that's, that's what that's there for, is to see, see if a placebo effect um, has any kind of change. Um, some people just realizing they're getting the medicine will perhaps um, behave differently. Summary, in a randomized experiment, if, if there are large differences in outcomes among treatment groups, we can conclude the differences are due to the treatments. So if you give half the uh, half, uh, individuals a, a particular treatment, some kind of drug, and you give the other half a placebo, um, if there's a differences between them, significant differences, then you can conclude, conclude that um, differences are due to the different treatments. Double blind. Neither the investigators nor the subject knew who has been assigned to which treatment. Um, important in some cases, if I know that I've given you a particular drug, maybe I'll pay more attention to you. Um, so you may not know you're receiving it, so you may be blinded from your side, um, but from my side, if I know you're received it, then I'm paying more attention to you. The fact I'm paying more attention to you, maybe that causes you to act differently. So, you know, there's a lot of different reasons why double blinds are important. We got completely randomized experiment. Uh, no restriction on which subjects may be assigned to which treatment. Um, then we also got randomized block experiments. Subjects are split into blocks and then randomly chose from within each block. Again, sometimes if you do a completely randomized experiment, you don't get a, a wide dispersion among um, the different groups you're studying. Um, maybe most of your um, individuals in a study are, are male. And if I do a randomized experiment, then um, I get my subjects that are receiving the treatment is all male. Well, that doesn't really tell me anything about the, the females in the, uh, the study. So, again, sometimes you want to split them up and then randomly choose from within each block. Now, blocks can be different different things based upon the, whatever you're, uh, you're analyzing. It might be ages, might be gender, or anything. Confounding. Difficult in telling whether a difference in the outcome is due to the treatment or some other difference between treatment and control groups. The thing about a, uh, and, and along with that, it's confounder, a, ver a variable that is related to both the treatment and the outcome. Um, 
part of the benefits of doing a uh, treatment is that you're controlling uh, a lot of different aspects not always but you're controlling a lot of different aspects maybe um, I'm putting people into a laboratory and I'm, uh, I'm studying them I um, watched a, a TV show last night uh, last ship and um, they picked six people and they did not pick them a random uh, they volunteered and they asked them a lot of different um, different questions about their their health history and and so forth what they're trying to do is they're trying to get six different people they didn't want to get six of the exact same but they wanted to be somewhat random just based upon their, their questioning and um, you know if they if the drug didn't react like they should um, is it due to the treatment that they were giving or is it some other factor that comes in sometimes you have a, another factor that comes in that really screws up the results and you just can't tell um, you know what's happening what what's causing this and so forth cohort study a group of subjects the cohort is a study to determine whether various factors of interest are associated with an outcome now types of cohort studies prospective subjects are followed over time um, cross-sectional measurements are taken at one point in time retrospective subjects are uh, sampled after that outcome has occurred now these are studies these are not experiments um, because to be honest it's not it's not uh, ethical for us to experiment on on humans <laughs> you can't put them into a uh, uh, laboratory and, and control everything about their lives and see what happens studies you just gotta study them um, maybe in how they live their lives maybe they have they come in and give you feedback a um, lot of different factors could be um, contributing um, to the results and that's what you have to be careful of is that uh, when you're when you're trying to analyze the results you have to look to see what else is happening that might have caused this um, so not so easy to do studies are case control study two samples are drawn one sample consists of people who have the disease of interest the cases and the other consists of people who do not have the disease the controls investigators look back in time to see if factor of interest differs between two groups now one thing I do want to point out about studies is sometimes the very fact that I'm studying an individual uh, alters uh, the results if uh, nobody's observing you then maybe you react differently um, and again it all depends upon what you're studying and how you're studying it and so forth and whether that uh, makes a difference 